strategy and tactics, size up, fire party organization, and the command process are all crucial elements of any shipboard fire response. They are critical components integrately linked, but all depend on one key element, the pre-planning process. Pre-planning provides the background and awareness that allows the ship's officers and crew to contain, control, and extinguish an emergency fire quickly and efficiently. Pre-planning, as the name indicates, begins long before the alarm bell sounds. It begins with a fire pre-plan manual. A fire pre-plan provides the immediate access and full knowledge of the ship's construction, fire suppression equipment, and fixed firefighting systems that senior officers and fire team leaders require. Keep in mind that this manual serves... Let's begin with the onboard emergency equipment. All officers must know the full capabilities of the equipment on board. That includes being familiar with the type of equipment on board, where it is located, and if the equipment is likely to be blocked by a major emergency. In further recognizing the limitations of firefighting equipment, you must know how large a fire can be fought without more equipment, and if more equipment is available shoreside. If reliance on shoreside equipment is a possibility, investigate the quality and quantity of equipment available as well as the amount of time it will take to get it on board. It may also be necessary to rescue personnel. Check to see the quality and quantity of onboard equipment and determine if shoreside supplements will be required for rescue. Understanding the ship's equipment resources is an important first step in recognizing the ability to fight a fire. The second step... If the temperature of the exposed steel is over 212 degrees Fahrenheit, water will flash to steam. Continue to cool with the water pattern until no steam rises. Whenever water is being used to cool exposures as well as an extinguishing agent, use water discipline. This is particularly important when using shoreside assistants that may not be familiar with vessel dynamics. Water, though commonly used in fighting accommodation area fires, has some serious considerations. While water is effective, it is extremely heavy. For example, a 12 foot by 12 foot compartment filled with six inches of water has added 2.24 tons to its weight. With a fire hose at a flow rate of 100 GPM, this can occur in a little over five minutes. The captain must review the pre-planned drawings to consider the potential flooding, stability, and drainage problems associated with use of water. Also, the higher up on board the fire is, the stability issue intensifies. A good rule of thumb is to remove one gallon of water for every gallon you put on. While exposure is very important, be sure to minimize manpower consumption during this stage in preparation for later stages. When considering which items need protection from the heat of fire, don't overlook items such as closed containers, cargo piping, piping supports, firefighting equipment and lifeboats as well as the obvious exposures such as adjacent fuel and cargo tanks. Next in order of priority is confinement of the fire. At this point, the immediate goal is to completely confine the fire so it does not spread or intensify. Remember, when a fire is confined, you have started to control it. Fire spreads three ways. First, through convection, which is the movement of heat and gases through open doors, hatches, ports, or... Building the strategy is like filling out a checklist, but it is done on the spot, quickly, and usually not on paper. To select the strategy, a clear picture of all components is required. For example, a captain that knows he has a 4,000 square foot gasoline deck fire is well on his way to building a strategy. After initial assessment, he knows the probability of the wind increasing or shifting is low. Referring to previous assessments, he knows that he has eight crew members to fight the fire, and his resources include CO2 extinguishers, dry chemical extinguishers, water hoses, foam hoses, and foam monitors. Based on the crew's level of training and his knowledge of the fuel involved, the captain knows the probability of portable extinguishers or water hoses effectively fighting the fire is low. He determines his strategy is to mount a highly aggressive offensive 
using the 2,000 gallons of foam concentrate he has available. Having determined the strategy, the tactics must be implemented. Tactics use the resources most effectively and safely. They spell out the details of how to approach and fight the fire. In this case, the tactics are to use foam monitors instead of foam hoses based on the size of the fire and the limited manpower. The firefighters will approach from the aft with the wind at their back. The monitor operators will wear protective clothing and, if necessary, be protected with water hoses. Finally, if there is any remaining three-dimensional fire after the foam has been applied, it will be fought with portable dry chemical extinguishers. As in any emergency situation, always be prepared to assume the worst. This helps the captain err on the side of safety. It is generally better to bring too much to bear on a fire than too little.